Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I'm going to show you some things I discovered when building some of these little test boxes, these attenuators, demodulators, all this stuff that I've been playing with for future videos to, you know, put together for you guys. This one's a quick one, hopefully, um, and uh, but it covers, as usual, a lot of data, um, but uh, really... I think you'll get a lot out of it, and maybe you'll be just as surprised as I was when I started checking SWR on this stuff. Anyway, oh, please, as always, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you like the stuff I do. If you like the video I've done, click on like, questions and comments down below, and with that, let's get on with it. Well, hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, excuse uh, my little uh, camera piece right there. Uh, I wanted to talk really quick about some stuff I learned building all these little test boxes having to do with uh, uh, what's inside the box and SWR and really mostly SWR changes due to distances. So uh, here are the boxes right here. These are actually identical circuits. Uh, they're a little different, but the biggest difference in the circuit, okay, is that this has a really large distance between the in and out, and this has a much shorter distance between the in and out. But virtually these circuits are identical, okay? Now, with all that, let's talk just really quickly about these circuits here. I'm going to grab this and let me go ahead. I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit to give you a better shot just to explain what these circuits are. Uh, basically over on this side is uh, an in and an out. They're, they don't have to be in either direction but this would be where we'd hook a radio up and then an antenna. And then on this side down here this is an attenuated output and I stole this design from uh, uh, somebody else, of course, we steal everything from somebody else, right? But uh, basically, this is someplace, depending on the frequency, between 61 and about uh, 52 dB uh, step down. Now, over on this side, this is interesting because this is really what I was going after. This is an AM demodulator circuit right here. Uh, and I'm actually going to include the diagrams to these uh, in another video uh, when I hook this all up to a scope. The other thing I just wanted you to glance at over here was, again, this is the same circuit, a few less components and stuff like that. Uh, but the only real difference is the distance, okay? Let's get into that a little bit. Well, all right, as with all our projects, you know, we need a control. So this is my control here, and this is what we've got going. Now, um, understand that I set some markers up. Uh, marker 1 to marker 2 talks about from 1 megahertz all the way to 151 megahertz. So what I want to do is cover uh, up to 2 meters. Uh, and then, of course, 3 and 4, that actually is uh, 220, and then 5 and 6 is 440. And the reason that I did this is those are the bands of interest that I test in, okay? Now, remember, the only thing that's different about the devices that we're about to test is that one has a greater distance uh, between the in and out than the other. Let's take a look at the big box and let's take a look at a sweep on that based on uh, 1 megahertz all the way up to 500 megahertz. Whoa, ho, ho, look at that. So I have not, uh, I've, I've kind of moved my markers a little bit on this one uh, because I wanted to take a look at usable area in the front half, which between 1 and 2 basically goes from 1 uh, meg all the way up to 191 meg. And that's still pretty much in the usable range. But three, this thing peaks out. Oh my gosh, it peaks out at over 21 uh, uh, to one SWR, right? So that's a little over the top. We probably don't want to use that. The next dip, 
uh, marker four takes us down just under two, and that's at uh, 30, uh, 311 megahertz, which isn't in the area of interest for me. I'm an amateur radio operator. If I take a look at five, that's 351. That's back up at about 13 and a half to one. And then my last dip, uh, number six, is 1.2 to one. I was actually kind of surprised to see that, but that's okay. That works for me. Um, and this basically means that this box is usable, but it's only usable uh, from, uh, oh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say all of HF and then into, uh, um, oh my goodness, into uh, two meters. Let's actually take a look here, though, at uh, what the little box did, right, with the short area. Quite a considerable difference. I mean, take a look. Our high peak... Uh, is number five. It's all the way up at 461. It's, um, you know, uh, six and a half to one. Uh, our uh, very low end of this, of course, is uh, one to one. And then uh, uh, right at about 191, we start seeing, uh, we're getting up close to two, um, um, two to one. So, um, Usable frequency as well, you know, that's going to be an important thing here. Let's kind of look at the overlay of the two, though. And I found this interesting also because, hey, all my stuff is different. You know, you would think if it was the electronics in the box, then it wouldn't really matter, right? Uh, it would be equally off at different, you know, parts, but this is completely different. So this tells me that the distance is doing something, uh, changing resonance, changing all sorts of stuff. I don't know, but um, I usually don't work in those high of areas, you know, uh, doing testing. So this was very educational to me. Now, let's, uh, let's kind of take a look here at the bands right and see where the bands lead us um so here in the larger box right uh one to two that's uh, uh up to two meters up to 151 megahertz and that is full-on usable but three to four that's 220 and uh no uh 220 starts out uh at uh uh a little over five to one, and it ends at over tw almost twenty-one to one. Uh, Two twenties out of the question on this box, um, but you know, uh, it's the same thing. Unfortunately, for four forty, right? Uh, we started about seven, and we ended about six. I, I, that just isn't doable, right? Um, now, if we take a look at the little box, eh, you know. Okay, um, our 220, or excuse me, our uh, two meters is still in good shape. Uh, ends up about 1.6 uh, to 1 at the top side. Uh, mm, 220's iffy, you know. Uh, it's around 2 to 1 all the way across. I could probably squeeze it in if I wanted. Um, this box, by the way, is designed to do... Uh, Again, demodulation of AM, so odds are I'm not going to be up in these high ranges, but it was interesting to look at. And again, 440 is out of the question regardless. And let's take again a little look at the overlay here. And as you can see, you know, um, it really is a completely different picture with the same components in it. So, I don't know. Like I said, kind of an education. Now... Just to pull this all together so you understand, this is one of our attenuators uh, that I made. This is the 40 dB, negative 40 dB attenuator that I built. And this is the SWR readings for it. And this uh, basically shows that almost everything is under 1.5 to 1, uh, with the exception of the upper end of 440. So uh, I could use this attenuator, this 40 dB attenuator, to evaluate... Uh, AM, FM, uh, all the way into 440. Anyway, you know, I hate to say it, but my goodness, I, uh, I think that's all I really have on this. Quick and fast, again, my name is Stu, AG6AG, and 
If you have any comments, make them down below. And uh, if you have questions, uh, I hope this incites your thoughts. Make those questions down below in the video you have the questions about. And guess what? I'll try to answer those questions in uh, a couple days. I usually get to them faster than that. Sometimes it might take me three or four. But, uh, you know, I do answer every question as honestly and as completely as I can. Anyway, with that, thanks a lot. Well, okay, you know, that was kind of a surprise to me because I was having such good luck with the attenuators. Um, and when I started building the attenuators, the, the bigger boxes were easy to, easier to work in. But I noticed that I was having trouble with SWR on the bigger boxes. So um, when I went to the smaller boxes, it went away. And then I thought, all right, well, let me, let me see if it's a real problem. And it showed up as a real problem. So, besides testing stuff, what does this really mean? I mean, if you're if you're building a test box, okay, it means that you have to build it with uh, short distances in mind. Maybe place things next to each other, you know, that are pass-throughs that are actually the RF signal itself. Um, but what about doing a switch? A coax switch. What if you were building a coax switch? What if you were, um, oh, I don't know. What What if you were going through a window pane? Something like that. Uh, uh, trying to go through, you know, the closed part of a window, those flat cables they have. What effect does that have? Why do we need to be careful of that, right? Um, this also kind of demonstrates how sensitive that conductor that we send out out of our radio up into an antenna actually is to damage or things like that, exposure. So really, at the end of the day, this video is about everything to do with making sure that you basically look, test, repeat often when you're doing things in amateur radio or any communications medium for that matter. Anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please click on the like button. Uh, oh, and if you haven't subscribed, yeah, please go down there and click the subscribe button. Uh, with that, my name is Stu, AG6AG. Hope you enjoyed this quick one. 73 and hope to hear you on the air.